Today we're diving into the US Air Force's most secretive project, the F-47, the world's first sixth generation fighter. This is a full breakdown of everything I know about the F-47 program, recent discoveries, and where it's headed. And here's the big one. Is this bad boy already flying? Well, spoiler alert, yes. But how is it flying? Could it already be flying missions? Check out this image of a tailless Delta wing design at Area 51 South Hangar. Interesting, right? Stay to the end of this video because I'll break down exactly what I think this jet was doing there at Area 51. And it's probably more of a plot twist than you think. I'm Ryan, also known as Max Afterburner, also known as the fighter pilot next door, and today we're going all in on the F-47. This thing's so advanced and the avionics are so next level, it's like flying is an afterthought. We did make sure it can fly, right? It's It can get airborne? Yeah, I can fly. The F-47 is the core of the Air Force's next generation air dominance program, NGAD. Kind of sounds like NJAD or Mega Chad. Maybe we should call this thing the Mega Chad but it's built to replace the F-22 Raptor and dominate any threats in the sky. Pentagon leaks have suggested that it's further along than what we thought, and prototypes are airborne. So as a refresher, on March 21st, 2025, top-level leaders at the Pentagon and the President unveiled the F-47, confirming Boeing's $20 billion contract to build the first crewed 6th Gen fighter. The name gives a nod to the World War II P-47 Thunderbolt and the Air Force's 1947 founding, as well as the 47th President approving this project. This jet is built for a future where air superiority is hard fought. It's built to be unmatched and adversaries won't even see it coming, in my opinion. Here's the bombshell. Air Force leaders confirmed the F-47X plane prototypes have been flying since 2020, logging hours in restricted airspace, likely at Edwards Air Force Base or Area 51. In a 2022 Planet Labs satellite image, we caught that tailless Delta Wing aircraft at Area 51 South Hangar. I'll give you a breakdown of the sizes. So it was showed to be 65 feet long, 50 feet wide with curved wings and no visible tail. It matches F-47 renderings, but what is it doing there? We're going to dive into that. But first, let's put that size in perspective. At 65 feet long and 50 feet wide, the F-47 is bigger than its peers. The F-35A is 51.4 feet long, 35 feet wide, 13.6 feet shorter, 15 feet narrower. The F-22, 62.1 feet long, 45.5 feet wide, just 2.9 feet shorter and 5.5 and feet narrower. The F-16 is 49.5 feet long and 32.8 feet wide, much smaller. Even the F-15E at 63.8 feet long and 42.8 feet wide is 1.2 feet shorter and 7.2 feet narrower. This larger footprint for the F-47 screams some things. It screams range, payload, and advanced systems, but it might trade some agility for stealth and endurance. But overall, I think this thing's got more horsepower than your neighbor's garage after his midlife crisis. Let's see, there's a Corvette, there's a Harley Davidson, and a speedboat. I'm sure he's not compensating for anything. But what else sets the F-47 apart? Let's talk range. So it's got an over 1,000 nautical mile combat radius that doubles the F-22s. That means it can strike deep and it can loiter. And its speed, likely Mach 2 plus, that's what we've seen on the Pentagon's graphics. And it's powered by adaptive cycle engines from the next generation adaptive propulsion program. Its stealth is said to be cutting edge with low observable tech surpassing that of the F-22 and F-35. It's got conformal sensors, embedded antennas, radar scattering skin, and radar scattering paint. So I think it's safe to say that this thing is very sneaky. I fear you're underestimating the sneakiness, sir. But even more than that, it's a hub for collaborative combat aircraft, CCAs. Those are AI-driven drones that act as wingmen. The Air Force wants a thousand CCAs, each with a 700-mile-plus combat radius. And it's said that the F-47 could even fly autonomously by default, with pilots overriding manually, and that blends human skill with machine precision. So back to the F-47 in a second. I want to tell you about today's video partner. It's War Thunder. They're the ultimate vehicle combat game, and they're free to play on PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and mobile. This is no arcade sim. You're commanding over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships from 10 major nations, from 1920s biplanes to today's screaming fighter jets and main battle tanks. War Thunder straps you into history's fiercest war machines, and my personal favorite are the modern fighter jets. Nothing beats tearing through the skies in those beasts, except maybe the real thing. With visuals so sharp and sounds that hit like an afterburner, every vehicle feels alive. You're diving into epic player versus player battles with 70 million players worldwide Wide, where every dogfight and tank duel is pure adrenaline. When you or an enemy goes down, War Thunder's X-ray view breaks it down, showing exactly where the shell punched through, what systems got wrecked, and why the vehicle went down in flames. And now, War Thunder's new mobile version for iOS and Android lets you bring the battlefield anywhere with slick controls, stunning graphics, and massive multiplayer chaos in ground, sea, and air. There's simply no game better suited for fans of military history, so here's your mission. Sign up for War Thunder for free using my links in the pinned comment or video description. New players
players and returning players who haven't played for at least six months on PC or consoles will score a massive bonus pack for a limited time. It's loaded with premium vehicles, the exclusive Eagle of Valor vehicle decorator, 100,000 Silver Lions, and seven days of premium account to kickstart your campaign. So you can join War Thunder in the pinned comment link or in the link in the video description. Lock in this deal before it's gone and help support my channel. Let's roll. But why do we even need the F-47? Well, the skies are more contested than ever with countries rolling out advanced threats and next-gen fighters and drones. This pushes air dominance to the limit. In June of 2025, the Pentagon added $3.5 billion to the F-47 program, calling it essential for high-threat environments. The F-47 defines sixth-generation air power. This jet's about owning the battle space. It definitely doesn't like to rent. And it's part of a network system that could in the future link stealth tankers, cyber platforms, and space assets. But it has hit some turbulence along the way. In May of 2024, the NJAD program was paused when it was said that the cost per copy would reach over three $300 million. That's triple that of an F-35. The Air Force did reassess though, and they concluded that the NJAD program was critical. And some have said that the F-47 is too pricey and that its stealth could be beatable in the future, but is it worth it? Well, the Navy's FAXX program is likely now canceled, and that's due to fund the F-47. And that could be because the size and weight needed to cover vast swaths of ocean and land without refueling just didn't align with Navy carriers. Maybe it didn't fit within the Navy carrier operations. The Navy's shifting potentially to CCAs and AI drones that could launch from these carriers to team up with the F-47. And having worked with the Navy myself multiple times in joint operations, it's clear to me that this would be an unbeatable combination, but I'm sure that it frustrates some Navy fighter pilot leaders who wanted their own sixth gen jet, understandably. Now let's dive into the hardware inside this thing. The F-47's design is obviously classified, but renderings show that tailless Delta wing with potentially having canards for stealth, even though some of the latest renderings show no canards. In my opinion, I'd say go with no canards. But Boeing's Phantom Works has been honing this thing since 2019 with X-Planes proving its concept as real. And the wings are angled down for what is said to be for enhanced stealth and high angle of attack stability. It's likely gonna be a twin engine design with hidden inlets to cut radar returns. And then it's got an open architecture avionics that allow for seamless upgrades. And the F-47's true Truly going to be built to be a data powerhouse. Its sensor fusion integrates with radar, infrared, and electronic signals from drones, satellites, and ground stations that blend it into a 360 degree battle space view for the pilot. It also processes AI in milliseconds and that augments the pilot's reality and that can be projected into the pilot's helmet and show targets, threats, and friendly positions. The sensor suite setup in the F-47 is going to be so seamless that to me it's going to be like every pilot going up against it is going to be out there enjoying their day, enjoying the beautiful blue skies and those puffy white clouds, and then boom, the reality just cuts to that scene in Mission Impossible, the final reckoning, the parachute's on fire. It's just literally going to be that scene over and over again. But let's talk about weapons. The F-47's packing some heat. It's got internal bays to stay stealthy, and it's likely packing the AIM-260 JATA missile for air-to-air -air kills, and it'll likely pack a punch for dogfighting, but likely some of those dogfighting skills will be surpassed for its AI sensor fusion and for its beyond visual range capability. It's also slated to have hypersonic missiles. Think Mach 5 plus weapons like the AGM-183 ARRW for precision strikes at extreme ranges. And those future laser weapons, no big deal, but we're talking megawatt class directed energy for zapping missiles or targets with pinpoint accuracy, all integrated to keep drag low and stealth high. Now let's talk about propulsion the heart of this beast. The F-47 is gonna be powered by Next Generation Adaptive Propulsion Program Engines, or NGAP, with General Electric's XA-102 or Pratt & Whitney's XA-103 in the running. These aren't your standard jet engines. These aren't your grandfather's jet engines. They're three-stream adaptive cycle designs, a game changer for fighter performance. Here's how it works. Traditional engines have one or two airstreams, core and bypass. NGAP adds a third stream, a cooled airflow redirected in real time. Need raw speed for Mach 2 sprint? No problem. The engine shifts to high thrust mode, pumping air through the core for maximum power. What about cruising for range? It flips to high bypass mode, sipping fuel like a commercial jet, boosting efficiency by up to 25% over the F-35's F-135 engines. That third stream also cools electronics, critical for the F-47's massive sensor suite, and it reduces heat signature for stealth. But with advanced composites and additive manufacturing, these engines can handle extreme temperatures, delivering over 40,000 power 
pounds of thrust, and that's more than the F-22's F-119 engines. The NGAP's digital design means faster prototyping, and both GE and Pratt are on track for ground testing by late 2025. This tech, evolved from the adaptive engine transition program, makes the F-47 a versatile predator, balancing speed, range, and survivability like never before. These engines sound simple enough, right? No. Right, no. And the Air Force released a graphic showing the F-47 leading its CCAs, the YFQ-42A and YFQ-44A in a networked formation. And this is a glimpse into how this jet commands the battlefield and how it's different from all the other jets before. It sets the stage for what these drones bring to the fight. The CCAs are game changers. The YFQ-42A built by General Atomics is a dogfighting specialist. It's compact, Mach 1.5 Super Cruise, 360 degree infrared sensors and armed with AIM-260 JATA missiles for close-in air-to-air kills or beyond visual range kills. It carries up to four missiles in internal base for maximum stealth. And then the YFQ-44A from Anduril. It's multi-role, built for beyond visual range attacks and dogfighting. It'll carry long-range AMRAMs up to six AIM-120s for air-to-air -air dominance and likely AIM-9Xs. Joint air-to-surface standoff missiles with two JASMs for precision hits on hardened targets. Both of these CCAs are stealthy with a 700 mile plus range and AI for autonomous maneuvering. They can also act as missile trucks, decoys, or jammers to even more amplify the F-47's lethality. The F-47 controls CCAs via a secure jam-resistant data link. Pilot or AI can assound roles like scout, strike, or decoy. And I'm assuming this thing will likely use a touchscreen or voice commands to control these CCAs. The F-47 can likely manage 12 or more of these drones at a time, dynamically retasking them mid-mission if needed. It's like a conductor leading a lethal or Orchestra. And the cockpit setup has been debated, single pilot or tandem with a weapon systems officer. I've flown both of these setups, F-16 single pilot ops and the F-15E's dual crew configuration. The single pilot pros would be lower weight, simpler design, AI offloads to the CCA's management could reduce the load of that single pilot. The cons would be one pilot being overwhelmed juggling drones, sensors, and in combat, all bets are off. Like they say, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. And the tandem setup pros would be that Wizzo in the back could handle air-to-ground and air-to-air -air CCA coordination, letting the pilot focus on flying and strategy. The cons would be adding weight, cost, and complexity. So AI likely makes single pilot viable, but tandem could excel for CCA heavy missions. The Air Force wants 185 F-47s, but at $300 million each versus $143 million for an F-22, that's a steep price to pay. But the FAXX for the Navy has been canceled, so the Pentagon's banking on the F-47 and that extra money is going to the budget of the F-47. First flight tests are set for 2029 and operations for combat could happen as soon as 2035. And who knows, with improved processing and manufacturing, it could beat that 2035 number by years. But now let's talk about that 2022 Area 51 photo of the potential F-47 prototype. What was it doing? Well, some of the plausible missions include an NJAD demonstrator for top brass. Boeing likely flew an X-plane to convince Pentagon leaders securing their $20 billion contract. Likely they were also testing the cockpit layout. F-22, F-35, F-15E, and F-16 pilots likely tested the user interface for intuitive HUD and CCA controls. And my guess is they likely skipped the HUD altogether and they went for that 360 degree control suite that's projected onto the pilot's helmet. But it's incredibly important to test that user interface. And if I was a betting man, I would say that they likely went with that side stick configuration like the F-22, F-35, and F-16. To me, it was just way better being able to see all the screens in front of me and not have a stick blocking the way, especially of that center console screen. They probably also did collaborative testing with the YFQ-42A and YFQ-44A. The F-47 probably flew with CCAs to validate data links and AI coordination for dogfighting, BVR strikes, and ground attacks. And I bet the F-47 runs those drones with stone cold precision. I picture the F-47 at a blackjack table sitting there with two kings and it's like, hit me. The enemy's like, wait, what? And then of course, every single time an ace, boom, smacks that enemy in the face. And the competition sees that ace and they're like, well, 
But what missions might the F-47 fly in combat? Well, likely deep strike operations where it can penetrate hostile air defenses with the CCAs acting as decoys. And then it's going to be a beast for intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance doing real-time mapping of battle space for joint forces. And then one of the biggest things is going to be electromagnetic dominance. It'll jam radars and deploy cyber payloads via its CCAs. It'll also focus on air superiority, leading those CCA swarms, and those CCA swarms will be decked out with AMRAMs, AIM-9Xs, and they'll have the ability to slay beyond visual range and in a dogfight. And these pilots are going to make it shine, and these pilots are going to have to focus and hone in on mastering AI, drones, and weapons to turn the F-47 into the battlefield king that it's meant to be. So the F-47, it's a bold leap, but it's a fighter to keep the Air Force unmatched in air superiority. So it's obviously flying right now, as we see in this Area 51 image. So its flights are confirmed, but what they do during the missions of those flights is obviously secret, but I guarantee what it's doing is shaping the future of air dominance. So will it deliver? That's on Boeing and the Air Force to build this beast into what it's meant to be. Oh, and don't forget about War Thunder. It's the free-to-play combat game with over 2,500 insanely detailed tanks, planes, and ships from biplanes to modern fighter jets with epic player versus player battles and 70 million players. It's a military history buff's dream. Hit up my links in the pinned comment or video description to join and grab a limited time bonus pack with premium vehicles and more. Don't skip it or a directed energy weapon from an F-47 might fry your car's engine next time you jump inside. I warned you, check out those links in the pinned comment or the video description. What do you think? And when do you think this F-47 could actually be flying combat missions? Let me know in the comments below. And the best compliment you can give me is just watch this video right here. This video is teed up specifically for you and it's the best thing you can do to compliment the channel. Just watch this video right here. I'll see you on this video right here. This is Ryan, also known as Max Afterburner, also known as the Fighter Pilot Next Door, signing off.